Rock legend Rod Stewart said, It was early detection that saved my voice, and I imagined my life. You may be asking, what is a quote from a rock star doing in a walking podcast? Well, this episode is about a self-diagnostic health test you can and should perform at least once a month. A walking speed is a powerful indicator of vitality. Walking speed studies shows that a person's pace, along with their age and gender, can predict their life expectancy just as well as a complex battery of other health indicators such as blood pressure, body mass index, chronic conditions, and smoking history. Now, people who are in better physical condition tend to walk faster than those who are not. Slow walking speed has been associated with a higher risk of disability, hospitalization, and mortality. Studies have shown that slower walking speed is a predictor of future health problems and can be a sign of a decline in physical function. In this episode, you'll learn about the link between walking speed and life expectancy. I'll teach you the 10-minute time test that is a self-evaluation test you can do at any time that will alert you to potential health issues. Getting medical treatment sooner will give you a better chance of full recovery and with lower medical costs. I'll teach you my STEPS acronym to walk with better form, and you'll learn 10 ways to increase your walking speed right now. now. Overall, your walking speed can provide valuable information about your physical function and overall health. This makes it an important indicator for healthcare professionals to consider. So keep this quote by Rod Stewart in mind throughout this episode. Quote, it was early detection that saved my voice and I imagined my life, end quote. Then learn how you can use an early detection walking exercise to head off potential life-changing illness. And listen to the end of this episode to learn how you can download the first two chapters of my book, Fitness Walking and Bodyweight Exercises, and find out how you can get over $104 in bonus content, including the audiobook version for free. Caution, the information contained in this podcast may cause you to feel better than you have ever felt in your entire life. Symptoms include a broader smile, happier disposition, brighter outlook on life, and a general feeling of bliss. Proceed with wild abandon. Hello, I'm Frank Ring, the author of the Amazon bestseller, Walking for Health and Fitness, The Easiest Way to Get in Shape and Stay in Shape. I discovered the healing power of walking after a severe back injury put me out of work for four months and literally left me on my back trying to relieve the pain and heal. Through my books, website, YouTube videos, walking programs, and now this podcast, it's my mission to help others achieve a healthy, balanced lifestyle one step at a time through walking. Join me each episode as I discuss the physical and emotional benefits of walking along with information about fitness, mindset, nutrition, wellness, and more. So join me each week as I encourage you to walk on. And this week's main topic is walking speed and your life expectancy. Specifically, how you can do a simple 10-minute walking time test to measure your walking speed and assess your general health. A walking speed can be an indicator of overall physical fitness and strength. People who are in better physical condition tend to walk faster than those who are not. Now, as I said in the opening, slow walking speed has been associated with a higher risk of disability, hospitalization, and mortality. Studies have shown that slower walking speed is a predictor of future health problems and can be a sign of a decline in physical function. Now, walking speed can be an indicator of cardiovascular health. Walking is a low-impact aerobic exercise that can help strengthen the heart and improve circulation. People with a faster walking speed may have better cardiovascular health than those with slower walking speed. Now, walking speed can also be an indicator of cognitive function. Studies have shown that people with a faster walking speed tend to have better cognitive function, including better memory and executive function. Walking speed can be used as a measure of frailty in older adults. Frailty is a syndrome characterized by decreased physical function and increased vulnerability to adverse health outcomes. Walking speed can be used as a simple and reliable way to identify people who may be at risk of frailty and related health problems. So overall, walking speed can uncover a variety of health-related issues, including, as I said, cardiovascular health problems, respiratory problems, frailty. Neurological disorders. A slow walking speed may be an early sign of neurological disorders such as Parkinson's disease or dementia. And musculoskeletal problems. People with slower walking speeds may have decreased muscle strength and balance, 
which can increase the risk of falls and fractures. So now that you know the importance of knowing your walking speed, let me give you a very easy way to track your walking speed over time. The 10 minute time test. An easy way to diagnose your overall health is to do a 10 minute walking time test. It's a very simple test. How far can you walk in 10 minutes? Then at least once a month, uh, every other week is better, get into the habit of repeating this test. And the great thing is you can make it a part of your walking routine. Just designate one of your walking routes as your time test route, then walk it. Now how to do the 10 minute time test. Very simple, choose a starting point, begin your stopwatch. Now most smartphones have one, and then walk your normal pace for 10 minutes. Then mark your end point to see how far you have walked. Now this is your baseline number and record it. Keep it on record someplace you know where you stopped. Then repeat this process once a month, every two weeks is better. Use the same start point and see how you can walk in those 10 minutes. And by tracking your walking speed, you'll be more aware of hidden health problems if you suddenly start to slow your pace down. Now, if you feel well, yet have slowed down, there may be an underlying health issue and you should schedule an appointment with your health care provider. The quicker you resolve the issue, the less time-consuming and less expensive the treatment will be. Now, a local track is a good place to do the 10-minute time test. Or, on your favorite walking route, you can designate a specific spot along the route where yeah, you would be your start point, and when you get to that start point, start your stopwatch and walk your normal pace. That's important. Just keep what you think is your normal pace. You can then judge your speed based on where you are after 10 minutes. Now, if you always reach a spot or are near a specific spot, uh, let's say it's an intersection in those 10 minutes, then you know all is well. If you are several blocks short of this mark, then maybe there is an issue. Uh, it could be a, just a one-off type thing. You're just feeling tired on that particular day. But if you do the test two weeks later and you fall short of that intersection again, then maybe there is something going on and you should schedule that medical appointment, especially if you feel well overall, but you've slowed down. The time test can be done at any time during your walk. I suggest you do it at least 10 minutes um, walk ten, for 10 minutes before you do the time test so your body is warmed up and um, you know, you're, you're, you're in your groove. All right, Now, record your 10-minute times every time you do the test. Compare your results over time. Now, if, if there are slight differences in the time, that's normal. But if there is a significant difference that you're noticing, then, you know, again, it may be time to talk to a medical professional. The sooner the better and the sooner you get treatment, the less expensive and time-consuming it'll be. Now, overall, you can train your body to walk faster. So now, how to increase walking speed and supercharge your walking? To increase your average walking speed, think more steps. That's S-T-E-P-S. And this is an acronym I came up with. And having this simple mental device to remind you of what you need to do will get you moving quickly with just a little bit of practice. So on your next walk, Keep steps in mind as you take each step. And here we go. The S stands for shorter, quicker strides. Turnover rate is the key to quicker walking. The more steps you take per minute, the quicker you will walk. Now think of a car's engine pumping up and down quickly. Now you may think that a longer stride will help you walk faster, but this is not the case. Increasing your stride, put your legs in an outstretched position, which actually acts as a brake. Now, if you walk with music playing, uh, choose songs with different beats per minute and match your steps to those beats and you'll, you'll begin to walk faster that way. The, uh, that's the S in steps. The T in steps, toes propel you forward. Focus on pushing off your back foot and your toes as you take a step. Um, you know, initially when you do this, consciously picture that pushing off. Eventually it becomes second nature. The E, engage your core and glutes. Squeeze your glutes and engage your core to support your spine. Strong core muscles, that's the abdominal muscles, back muscles, and your butt muscles or gluteus maximus are essential to keeping your balance and walking well. The P stands for posture. Keep your body straight and your head up. This expands the chest cavity and increases your oxygen intake by more than 30%. Also, keep your eyes up ahead to help quicken your pace. Use your peripheral vision to watch where your feet will plant on the ground. And the final S, swing your arms quickly. Now, an easy way to quicken your walking speed is to quicken the speed at which you swing your arms back and forth. 
If you focus on your arms, your legs will naturally follow without the urge to lengthen your stride. Keep your arms bent and swing them back and forth in a quick, compact motion to increase momentum. Your shoulders should always be relaxed and down. Now, during each walk, keep the steps in mind. Pick a point in the distance and consciously apply the steps in reaching the point. Keep your focus on each of the five aspects of steps. That's shorter, quicker strides. T, pro, toes propel you forward. E, engage your core and glutes. P for posture. And S, swing your arms quickly. Now, eventually, as your body adjusts to this quicker pace, you will naturally move faster and with more pep in your step. Now, you can download my PDF file of the STEPS acronym to remind yourself of the importance of good walking form. I'll leave a link in the show notes. It'll be very easy to follow. So let me give you 10 ways to increase your walking speed. Now, this is a list of activities you can do while you're walking in order to increase the intensity and calorie burn rate. Okay, now, number one, walk more. The more you walk, the more your muscles adapt and work more efficiently. Number two, use my steps analogy when walking to improve your walking form. Again, I'll leave a link to a PDF file in the description in the show notes. Number three, improve your overall strength by adding bodyweight exercises to your walking routine. Now, my absolute favorite activity to boost the intensity of my walking workout is doing push-ups. Now, some benefits of doing push-ups are they increase functional strength, enhance your cardiovascular system, increase your whole body definition, prevent lower back injuries, and improve your posture. Now, if you have never done push-ups on a regular basis, let me tell you that to start out, they are tough to do at first. When I first started adding push-ups to my walk, I had difficulty doing five of them at a time. And I felt I was in good shape at that time. So begin with doing one or two if that's all you can do. Now, if you do push-ups on every walk, really rather quickly, you will uh, increase the number you can do. And within like two weeks, you can double that number. So if you can only do one or two, I'm telling you two weeks from now, you'll be up to four, five, six, quickly 10 per set that you do. Now, before I continue with the 10 ways to increase your walking speed, you can download the first two chapters of my book, Fitness Walking and Bodyweight Exercises. It's available on Amazon.com. And get a great start on adding fitness component to your walks. Now, as you just heard in tip number three, improving your overall strength will increase functional strength, enhance your cardiovascular system, increase your whole body definition, prevent lower back injuries, improve your posture, and help you walk faster. Now, in this book, I show you my core four bodyweight exercises that you can do while you're out on your daily walks. There's no need for free weights, machines, gym memberships, or anything like that. Your body and this book are all you need for a great workout. Now see this episode's show notes for a download link and enjoy the first two chapters of this book, uh, Fitness Walking and Bodyweight Exercises, and learn how to get the audiobook version for free so you can listen to the book while you're walking. Pretty good deal. Fitness Walking and Bodyweight Exercises is available in paperback and digital form through Amazon.com. features my core four fitness movements that will tone your whole body in the least amount of time. So it offers a great value. It comes with free bonus content worth over $104. So be sure to check the link in the show notes and check out Fitness Walking Bodyweight Exercise sales page to see all the included bonuses that come with getting you into great physical health and fitness. And I'll get you started on the right foot. You'll get my walking um, inspiration newsletter and my get out the door checklist that's included with this. And the number four way to increase your walking speed is to swing your arms. Now, if you want to go faster, take shorter, quicker strides and focus on your arm swing. Your legs will follow your arms. Faster arm swing leads to faster leg turnover. Do not increase your stride length. One good option, bend your arms at 90 degrees and pump from your shoulder like race walkers do. Also, swing them naturally as if you're reaching for your wallet in your back pocket. On the swing forward, your wrist should be near the center of your chest. The vigorous arm pumping allows for a quicker pace and provides a good workout for your upper body. And number five, add some interval training, also called HIT, and that stands for High Intensity Interval Training. Now, research shows that interval training workouts in which you alternate periods of high intensity exercise with low intensity recovery periods increases your fitness and burns more calories over a short period of time 
than steady state cardio, which in plain language is just doing the same thing for your whole workout time. Now, don't be frightened by the word high intensity. It's relative to your current physical condition. If you're just starting out as a walker and not in good condition yet, then your hit will be different than what I would do on my hit trainings. Okay, for example, you're just starting out. One way to incorporate hit into your workout is to just speed up your walking pace for one minute every five minutes during the workout. Just pick a point in the distance and walk quicker to that point. Then go back to your normal pace. Now, by doing this several times during a walk, you are training your body to walk faster. So if you're just starting this out, keep it simple. Pick a spot in the distance, walk quickly to that spot, then slow back down to your normal pace. Okay. Now, if you walk for a half hour and you do this routine, so walk for a half hour, you would do six hit intervals within that walk, right? One every five minutes. That's an excellent way to train your body to walk faster. Also, make an effort to walk as much as possible. Skip the elevators, the escalators, take the stairs. Leave your car at home if you can walk a mile or two to a friend's house. Walk to work or at least part of the way. Okay, I know at shopping centers, I take the farthest parking spot away so I can get those extra walking steps in. Plus, it's easier to park. Uh, shoot for a goal of walking at least 10,000 steps a day. That's become the magical number. You don't need exactly 10,000. Anything you do is better than not doing anything. But 10,000 is a nice goal to have. Now, a pedometer or your phone apps are available and they, they will track your steps, okay? Now, 10,000 steps, as I said, is a good goal and it would cover nearly five miles of walking. Now, there's nothing magical about the 10,000 steps other than it sounds cool that you reach the mark. The magic of the number is that you are on your feet and moving. If you only reach 8,000 steps, that's awesome. Again, just walking every day and training your body to walk quicker it is uh, what's going to keep you healthy. And number six, choose varied terrains. Now, walking on grass or gravel burns more calories than walking on a sidewalk or on a flat track, okay? Walking on soft sand increases the caloric expenditure by almost 50%. Walk up and down hills to build strength and stamina and burn more calories. Combine hill walking with your uh, regular flat terrain walking, and it's, that's a form of interval training because it is tougher to walk up those hills. When walking uphill, lean forward slightly uh, as it's easier on your leg muscles. Walking downhill can be harder on your body, especially your knees, than walking uphill and may cause muscle soreness. So slow down your pace, keep your knees slightly bent, and take shorter steps as you're walking down a hill. And number seven, try a walking stick or poles. A walking stick is helpful for balance, especially for older people. Now to enhance your upper body workout, Use lightweight, rubber tip trekking poles. They're sold in many sporting goods stores. I'll leave a link in the description. Now, this is similar to cross-country skiing, but without the skis. When you step forward with your left foot, the right arm with the pole comes forward and is planted on the ground, uh, and even with the heel of your front foot. Okay? This works the muscles of your chest and arms, as well as some abdominals, while reducing the stress on your knees. Find the right pole size for yourself by testing them in the store, you should be able to grip the pole and keep your forearm about level as you walk. Number eight, use hand weights, but carefully. Hand weights can boost your caloric expenditure, but they may alter your arm swing and thus lead to muscle soreness or even injury. They're generally not recommended for people with high blood pressure or heart disease. Now, if you use hand weights, start with uh, light one pound weights and increase the weight gradually over time. The weight shouldn't add up to more than 10% of your body weight. Ankle weights are not recommended as they increase the risk of leg injury. Number nine, try backward or retro walking for change of pace. It is demanding since it's a novel activity for most people. Uh, even a slow pace, two miles per hour, provides a fairly intense workout. Uh, retro walking is also a good option if you're trying to vary your workout on a treadmill or stair climbing machine. Um, <laughs> A little difficult to do on the treadmill. Be careful with this. And if you're recovering from a knee injury, it may help to do retro walking. Now, be careful going backwards. Uh, use a smooth surface. Keep far away from traffic, trees, potholes, and other people that are exercising. Like I said, a track is an ideal place for backward walking. If possible, work out with a spotter, a forward walking partner who can keep you from bumping into something and help pace you. To avoid muscle soreness, start slowly. Uh, don't try to walk backward more than a quarter mile in your first week. 
Okay, and caution, elderly exercisers or individuals with balance problems should not do retro walking. And number 10, use a metronome to develop a faster leg turnover. To increase your pace, use a metronome. You can download a free metronome app onto your smartphone. Now walk for a few minutes to warm up, then adjust the metronome to find your current pace. Then gradually increase the beats per minute and match your footfall to the beat. Now you can also walk to the beat of your favorite music and try songs with various beats per minute so you can adjust it. It's almost like an interval train. Remember to walk naturally. Do not increase the beat so quickly that you lose the proper walking form you developed by following my steps acronym. Walk quickly for at least a half mile every day or one hour four times a week. If you weigh 150 pounds, walking at three and a half miles per hour on flat terrain burns about 300 calories per hour. And this schedule would burn about 1,100 calories a week. Studies show that burning 1,000 to 2,000 calories a week in exercise helps protect against heart disease. Now a note on using the metronome. I use walking to increase my fitness level and improve my health. I used the metronome a few times, and while it definitely helped increase my turnover rate, now that's the number of steps per minute, I found that using the metronome for a majority of my walk interfered with the best part of walking, and that's the time I have to let my mind wander and get creative with my thoughts and in thinking over problems and seeking solutions. When I used the metronome, um, you know, it definitely increased my speed, but it came at a cost of what I liked about working out. Um, And just like when I was runner, when I had that metronome, I just felt like I had to get faster and faster and I wasn't focused on really the mindset issues that I really, the mindset benefits that I really like about walking. So again, use the metronome occasionally just to help pick up your walking speed. So are you looking to start walking to get in shape? Are you already a walker? but looking to take your walking experience to the next level. I've recently released my Walking for Health and Fitness Complete Walking Program. Through interviewing many people at different fitness levels, I came across pretty much the same concern, namely how to hold yourself accountable to get out and walk or do any type of exercise when you're not feeling it. Now, yes, the motivation is easy when you first get fired up to get into shape and you begin walking because of all the great benefits you get from it. Then, after a week or two, you get derailed by a host of excuses not to get off the couch and walk. I'm too tired. I had a rough day at work. It's too cold out. It's too hot. And the list goes on and on. Well, my interviewees told me a number of excuses they allowed to sidetrack them. So I researched and came up with what I call the core four principles of my walking program. Number one, your why. Number two, your goals. Number three, your habits. And number four, most importantly, how to hold yourself accountable. So after I take you through the action steps to define the first three principles, then the accountability aspect will fall into place. You can enroll in the program through the Teachable platform. I'll leave a link in the description. Check it out and enroll risk-free for my 30-day no questions asked money back guarantee. The only thing you have to lose is the excuses and some body weight and some tension, and you could lose anxiety, and I can keep going on and on about the benefits of this program and of walking. Now, this episode's Health and Fitness Insight. This is from my walking logbook journal. It's available on Amazon. Start a relationship with yourself. Now, see yourself as your best friends see you. Focus on your best qualities and fall in love with them. Remind yourself of your achievements. Focus on the good you do for others. Be kind and believe in yourself. Now, on your walks, set aside a few minutes and focus on yourself. Imagine feeling deep and pure love for yourself. Picture a glowing orb of light sending warmth throughout your body. Bask in love and acceptance. Now, I'll leave a link in the show notes where you can download the first three weeks of insights and the logbook pages and try the book out for yourself. And then send me a note, tell me what you think of it. And in the walking product of the week, I want to share my thoughts on how good the Care Remote boot and trail socks are. I've been using Care Remote socks for several months now and have found that they have maintained their elasticity wash after wash. Now, this is a big deal if you go through as many pairs of socks as I do each week. Now, other socks look just as good coming out of the package, but my Care Remotes look and perform like new wash after wash. Now, the Care Remote sock features are the blister reduction, they have a consistent fit, moisture wicking channels, a larger toe box, 
There's a graduated compression throughout the sock, and they have a weave that promotes blood flow to keep your feet feeling rested. Keramote socks have 100% all natural antibacterials with no metals. They use easy glider technology, which basically means it's easy to slip into your shoe or your boot. They have a manipulated weave, and they use strategic placement of fibers and voided yarn. Lastly, Keramote is always working on new products. The old adage, you get what you pay for, proves itself when you compare Keramote socks to others. You spend hours on your feet, so treat them right and spend a few dollars on them. This is money well spent, and your feet will thank you. I'll leave a link in the show notes for you to check out these great socks. Also, check out my video on the importance of wearing good quality socks when walking. I'll leave a link to this YouTube video in the show notes. So let's end this episode with review that this is all about walking speed is a predictor of life expectancy and how a very simple 10-minute time test is as effective as a battery of diagnostic tests that your doctor performs during a routine physical exam. You're out walking anyway. So why not find a stretch on your favorite walking route and schedule a time to time yourself every week? Early detection of a health issue will make the recovery time shorter and less expensive. Now remember my acronym STEPS, S-T-E-P-S. S, shorter, quicker strides. T, toes propel you forward. E, engage your core and glutes. P, for posture. Walk tall, keep your body straight and your head up. And the final S, swing your arms quickly. Your leg turnover will follow your arm swing. Now follow these 10 steps to increase your walking speed. And that's number one, walk more. Number two, follow my steps walking analogy. Number three, add body weight exercises to your routine to improve your overall strength. Now click the link in the show notes to download the first two chapters of my book, Fitness Walking and Body Weight Exercises. Number four, swing your arms more quickly. Your legs will naturally follow your arm swing. Number five, add HIT interval training. That's high, in high intensity interval training. Number six, walk over various terrains by adding hills and stairs to your routine. If you can walk at a beach, that's great. Number seven, use walking poles. Number eight, use hand weights, but carefully. Number nine, walk backwards, which is called retro walking. You should do that on a track and have a spotter. And number 10, walk to the beat of a metronome or the beat of your favorite music. Now, your next step, don't forget to download the first two chapters of my Fitness Walking Bodyweight Exercise book and find out how to get $104 in bonus content, including the audiobook version, so you can listen to it on your next walk. Also, enroll in my Walking for Health and Fitness Complete program, it's risk-free, and learn about my core four principles of walking fitness and how to hold yourself accountable to get off the couch and into great shape. Now, this is Frank from Walking for Health and Fitness. Thank you for listening and walk on. And please give the Walking for Health and Fitness podcast a review. The most helpful place for you to do that is on Apple Podcasts, which you can do even if you aren't using an iPhone. Just log into your iTunes account and leave the show a review. Now, this really helps more people find the show so that they can learn about the benefits of walking and so much more. If you'd like to share the show, you can take a screenshot of this episode you're listening to right now and share it out on your Instagram stories. And when you do, make sure you tag me at Walking for Health and Fitness so I can see you're listening. Sharing your stories is going to help more people find this podcast. Also, share on all your social media. I'll leave my social media links in the episode notes. This is Frank Ring from Walking for Health and Fitness. Thanks again and walk on.